I was just gifted this book. And the first page I turned to, page 88, talks about the Federal Reserve. I think you guys will be interested in it. They don't want you to understand anything about what they're doing, he said. It's purposeful obfuscation, meaning they make things unclear and confusing. And it's brilliant. They weave a tapestry of BS meant to intimidate people, and it works. Very few Americans have ever really dug into what they are up to. Why do so many people not like the Federal Reserve? First of all, they're not federal, and they don't have any reserves whatsoever. The Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. They're a group of powerful bankers who orchestrated a phony crisis in the early 1900s to convince the American people that the country needed a strong central bank to help regulate the economy and bring Wall Street fat cats to heel. It's one of the most successful con jobs in history. Apparently, they took the name Federal Reserve for the sole purpose of scamming the American people and making it look like they were part of the government. They're not only not part of the government, they aren't even accountable to the American people. We as citizens can't toss any of them out or tell any of them what to do. They operate in total secrecy and have never undergone a thorough audit. What's astounding is that since the Fed was created back in 1913, the dollar has lost 96% of its purchasing power because the Fed sets interest rates. We have seen massive bubbles inflated under their policies only to eventually pop and create massive downturns in the economy. In fact, America's downturns have become longer and much more severe under the Fed. So why do we keep the Fed? Can't we get rid of it? America has killed two prior central banks. It could kill this one too if it wanted. That's the key though. Americans would have to want to, right? Exactly, and most people have no idea what it is. In fact, let me ask you something. How well do you know your American flag etiquette? Are you allowed to fly another flag above the American flag? Of course not, never. Do you have any cash on you? Do you have any idea what it says on top of your money? Above the words, the United States of America. Take your money out and look. Read to me what it says. Uh, he removed a $1, $5, $20, and $100 bill. They all say Federal Reserve note on top. Some say that's a perfect example of how the Fed sees itself as being above the United States government. Those notes aren't even issued by the Treasury Department. They may be printed in the building but the treasury has absolutely no say in when they get printed or how many of them get printed. But to keep the charade going, those Federal Reserve notes include both the signature of the treasurer of the United States as well as the signature of the United States Secretary of the Treasury. The, through its control of our currency, this unelected group of private bankers has driven the United States to the brink of bankruptcy. They're not only digitizing into existence more than $115 million an hour to cover risky loans and trades made by their pals at banks deemed too big to fail. Not printing, digitizing, and then depositing that digitized money into the accounts of banks who turn right around and keep making the same risky loans and investments because no matter how badly they screw up, there's no downside, no consequences. That's why the Fed was set up. But if there's that much more money being created, doesn't that mean that the existing money supply, the money in my bank account is increasingly worthless? Give yourself a gold star. Like I said, the, the dollar has lost 96% of its purchasing power since the Fed was initiated. The, they levy the highest and most corrosive taxes of all through their control of the money system. And it's all about covering the bad bets of their colleagues at the taxpayer's expense. After all, who do you think ends up with the bill? We do. That's right. What's more, the Fed controls what the interest rates will be on your bank accounts, how much interest you'll pay on your home loan, as well as your car loan and your student loans. They use their digitized money to buy U.S. government bonds so that our government can keep spending and spending and spending, which drives us deeper and deeper into debt. And does the Fed buy those bonds directly from the U.S. government? No, of course not. It uses brokers, brokerage firms it's friendly with in New York so that those firms get huge commissions. Those firms being the same Wall Street fat cats the Fed had promised to rein in, correct? It's an incredible shell game, but what may be of particular interest for your case is that Britain wanted to place the colonies under the influence of the Bank of England. That act was considered so beyond the pale that it was said 
to have been the final straw that led to the Revolutionary War. While some of the founders like Jefferson were against a central bank, <clears throat> there were others like Alexander Hamilton who were not only for it, but pushed hard to make it happen. In fact, to get Southern lawmakers on board, Hamilton agreed to make sure America's capital would be moved out of New York City and further south, which is how we wound up in, with Washington, D.C. Bingo. All that over a central bank. You said two previous central banks had been killed. How did we wind up with our current central bank, the Fed? Despite Jefferson's bitter opposition to central banks as being engines of speculation, manipulation, and financial corruption, President George Washington had signed the first bank's charter. But when it expired 20 years later, so many people hated it, Congress refused to renew it. President James Madison signed the second bank of the United States into existence, but when Andrew Jackson took office, he refused to renew its charter. He was a lot like Thomas Jefferson and saw the central bank as an engine for corruption. When the economy got rocky, Jackson wisely pushed for all federal land sales to be tra transacted in gold or silver. Many banks adopted a similar modus operandi, operant, and it, however you say that, and it started to catch on. Some banks, though, were so leveraged they couldn't pay their customers when they came looking for their money. This led to waves of bank runs, some of which actually created serious imbalances in the economy. One of the worst bank runs led to the creation of the Federal Reserve. Are you familiar with something called the Hegelian dialectic? I am. It is where a group or an individual creates a problem, knowing full well in advance how people are going to react to it. Then they begin agitating for something to be done about the problem for things to change. This is exactly what they've done to us all along. They make us sick and then they provide the medicine. You know the story. They create the problem so they can come in like the savior and fix the problem. And it's a cycle. There's nothing new under the sun. Once the masses are then worked up enough and desperate enough for something to be done, the party behind the problem unveils their solution. Wow. The people are thrilled to have a plan, any plan, and so demand that it be implemented. They never seem to realize that they've been manipulated and that they have, haven't have really ushered in change, but actually a much worse version of what they had previously, only now in brand new packaging. That's exactly what happened with the Fed. A problem was manufactured by a powerful group of people who sat on the sidelines waiting for a panicked citizenry to beg for a solution.